vines, foreshadowing an anal sex. Tsunade put down the papers and glared at the two teenagers in front of her. I'm not sure how to say this, exactly, but never use these techniques again. What? Naruto and Sasuke chorused, heartbroken. Do I genuinely have to spell out to you why you can't safely use them? Tsunade pinched the bridge of her nose. Ah, uh, yeah. Naruto replied. My beautiful baby is finally complete and I can't use her? Oh, for Tsunade blew through her nose and picked the papers up again, putting on a lecturing tone. The wind released shredding Raisingan Raisin Shuriken. And the fire released fragmentation Raisingan Raisin Kunai. I am not calling them that. Tsunade cleared her throat. The former, created by Naruto, applies wind release to the billions of plasma-like chakra particles in the Raisingan to turn them into billions of tiny razor-sharp blades. These things slice up your opponent on a cellular level. They will cut individual nerves by the dozen and turn the target's body into so much mulch. It could cut through the lower stages of the Susanoo and cause about as much pain as using the Susanoo. Sasuke frowned. How do you know about the Itachi? The Hokage dismissed. Ah, and then there's your technique. Sasuke, your technique melts into an opponent's body and superheats it causing each individual layer of their insides to force its way through every layer above it until it goes outside. You turn your target into a bomb. I'm not seeing the problem. Sasuke deadpanned. The problem, Tsunade's eye twitched, besides the fact that these would both constitute war crimes under Kanoha law, is what they do the user. Sasuke, you lose control of the technique the moment you let go of it. If it had been anything other than a magically reinforced murder priest, it would have gone off immediately in your face. Naruto, you also have to pummel your opponent with your technique. The entire time you're holding it, it is cutting into your own arm. Anyone other than you would have been crippled. It's possible you have permanent nerve damage from that single use. But I am me. And I'm fine. Naruto hedged. Don't. Use. Them. If you weren't two of the village's most powerful assets, I would have both your asses on cleaning duty for the rest of your lives. Tsunade told them, flatly. As it is thank you, for eliminating those Akatsuki. I'll ensure you are both suitably paid for your efforts. I mean, I can't take all the credit. Naruto demurred. Haku was a big help with are you saying this doesn't count as you beating an Akatsuki? Sasuke asked innocently. I did it all. By myself. Naruto hastily corrected. Don't try me, Sasuke, we've both got two takedowns. Are you competing on Akatsuki kills? Tsunade looked at them even more incredulously. Ah, uh, yeah? Naruto grinned. I took out Deidara and Kakuzu, he took out Sasori and Haiden. Whoever gets the least when the Akatsuki are all beat has to cook for the other for a week and hand feed them the meals. Hey, you wouldn't happen to know where any more get out of my office. Danzo Shimura is the leader of Root. And I hate him. Sai muttered the words to himself as he walked down the street. As always, there was the temporary discomfort as the programming tried to stop him saying them, and then the itch from Sasuke's counter Jin Jutsu suppressing it. The rebellion was worth the pain, however. The freedom was worth the pain. Ahead of him, his ears caught the words, and then he just tore into the dude's back with it. It was the most amazing thing I've ever seen Sai looked up and gulped. Haku stood there, chatting amicably with Inoshika Cho, but his eyes quickly locked onto Sai's. Gimme a second guys. He told them, jogging over to stand in front of him. They stood there for a moment. Haku raised an eyebrow. Sai opened his mouth, closed it, and eventually just sort of held his arms out to either side in a here I am gesture. It was enough, apparently. Haku grinned, made a beckoning gesture back to Ino, then grabbed Sai's arm and yanked him off towards the Hokage Monument. You're going away? Naruto pouted, heartbroken. Pervert sensei, why? Oh calm down, squirt, I'm only going to be a week or so. Jiraiya ruffled Naruto's hair. You think you're the only one who gets to go out on fun field trips? 
Yeah, but, you're old. Hey! Jiraiya grabbed for Naruto's head, but he scampered away, laughing. I could still kick your ass, you little git. Not with the QB you couldn't, and how's the QB cooperating at the moment? You win this round. Naruto declared, solemnly. Tsunade chuckled in amusement. They were all stood by Kanoha's gates, and now the Hokage was off duty, she had a bottle of sake in her hands. Nah, I'm not worried. Naruto shook off his pout and grinned. It's you. Go kick some Akatsuki butt. I'm scouting. Jiraiya corrected. There will be no ass kicking. So you're saving them for me? What? No, I'm telling Sasuke where they all are. You traitor, enough. Tsunade held a hand out between them, then went to massage her temples. Kami, is it the booze, or am I actually seeing two of you? You turned him into a mini-you. Missed opportunity for you there. Jiraiya agreed. We're lucky you took on Haku, he doesn't have half your temper. You haven't seen him talk about his boss. I'm gonna punch Mei's teeth in next time I see her Tsunade shook her head. Hey, midget, get lost. I need to talk to Pudgy here alone. Naruto straightened. Is that a mission, Lady Hokage? Absolutely. S rank, because if you don't get out of my face right now, it's gonna get real dangerous. Yes, ma'am. Naruto squeaked and scarpered. You love that kid, don't you? Jiraiya chuckled. He's all right. Tsunade admitted, smiling at Naruto's retreating back. A bit obnoxious at first, but charming, once you get used to him. I told you, he's a lot like you. Jiraiya blinked, trying to decipher the hidden meaning in the words. There was no way Tsunade had just paid him a genuine compliment. I know this isn't going to be as easy as you made out to him. She said, meeting Jiraiya's eyes. Whoever this pain is, he's possibly the leader of the Akatsuki. Itachi doesn't have a clue what he's capable of, just told me we probably shouldn't piss him off. You think I'm scared of a guy calling himself pain? Jiraiya laughed. Don't worry. Worst case scenario, I can annoy him to death with that nickname Al he froze, as Tsunade darted forwards and grabbed him in a hug. Just be careful, dumbass. She whispered, eyes closed. This isn't normal. He replied, dropping his persona for a moment and putting an arm round her. What's got you so afraid? I found a Rio on the ground earlier today. She mumbled back. That's not that five times. Oh. Okay, yeah, that's lucky. She agreed. There was a silence. Don't die. Please. She finished. She didn't know what else to say. I won't. I promise. He replied, grinning down at her. She smiled and wiped the tears away. So does this mean we're down to fuck when I get back or are you and Shizen still get the fuck out of my village? Hinata turned away from Daidara's remains and dead-eyed Toby. Welp. Toby's got to go now. He smiled from behind the orange mask. I don't think you're going anywhere. Hinata tried to intimidate him despite being on the verge of collapse. Yeah, but you see Toby paused, tapping his mask, y'all ugly. He crossed his arms once, twice, then poofed out of existence. Karen and Hugo both stared at the spot he had once occupied. Was was that a Karen gestured? Mangekyo Sharingan technique? Hinata glowered. Yes. Yes it was. I was going to say Vine reference. Oh. Yes, it was one of those two. Kudos flew down a few moments later, coming to rest next to the group, and Hinata gratefully sagged against his feathers. Woo! That was the coolest fight I've been in in ages. Thanks, mistress. Thank you too, kudos. You did amazing. She smiled back at him and scratched the crown of his head. Nah, really you did all the work. He replied, leaning into the contact. Hey, do you need me to stay around for anything, or is it cool if I bounce? 
Nothing else at the moment, thank you. Tell Athena and forsooth I said hi. Oh, I wasn't planning to go see them. Kudos dismissed, nodding his head off into the distance. There's an owl over there I wanted to go meet. Hinata stiffened. An owl? As in a regular owl or no? A sage creature, off in that direction. Kudos pointed with one wing, but whatever he could see was far beyond the eyes of the three ninja. Weird. I didn't think that there were any others chilling in the Five Nations. Wonder who summoned it. Despite her exhaustion, Hinata stood up. Niji. She whispered. Oh, crap. The N-word. Karen and Yugo exchanged glances, backed up a few steps. Hey, kudos, I've got no problem with you going to make friends, Hinata cracked her knuckles, but do you mind if we tag along? Itachi reached for his pouch, found it empty, and exhaled, deciding to take a break. The surrounding trees were peppered with kunai, shuriken, and a few loose pieces of cutlery. He heard the footsteps approaching from behind him but didn't react, waiting until a pair of hands clasped over his eyes. Guess who? said a cheery voice. Itachi gasped. Could it be yes? The most beautiful person in the world? Yees? The love of my life? Yees? Niji Huga? The hands came off and slapped him around the back of his head, and he laughed, turning to look at his visitor. Hey Izumi! How are you? His girlfriend crashed into his stomach, tilted her head up for a kiss, and then turned around, pushing her back into him and linking her arms around his neck. Terrible, now. You've ruined my mood with talk of your secret lover. My sincerest apologies. He smiled down at her. Could I ever possibly make it up to you? Hmm, let's see. She leaned in to kiss him again. They stayed like that for a few minutes, relishing the temporary peace and quiet. It was one of the cornerstones of their relationship, that. They could relax around one another. Such was all too rare in a ninja's life. I heard you're going out again. Izumi told him, eventually. Mm, taking out Kakashi's kids on another Akatsuki suppression mission. More information from your secret spying missions? Good for you. Izumi seemed hesitant, quite rightly. Relax. He told her. I've set guards out. We can speak freely. All right then. How is Niji doing? She held Itachi a little tighter. He sighed. About as well as he could expect to. This is an arranged trip, we're meeting him. Oh. What does he want, to get a feel of Hinata's teammates? No. He's picked a spot to fall on his sword. Oh. Izumi gave him a sad look. His face was set in stone. So this is it then? You've tried to convince him I've tried. Itachi growled. Again, and again, and again everything's there for him, but he just won't take it. Because there's nothing else for him to live for. Izumi nodded. I saw that look on his face, just before he left. She's the only other thing that matters to him. There's more, oh I know, there's at least two other big-ass responsibilities he has to take care of. But he doesn't care. Oh no, he cares. He'd die for me. He'd die for her. It's just that he can't bring himself to live for us. Itachi sighed. It's not a suppression mission. It's a recovery mission. Hinata recovery mission too, Electric Boogaloo. By the time we get there Niji will already be he paused. Swallowed. Continued. We'll pick up Hinata, bring her and Niji's body back to Kanoha. Give her his eyes if she wants them. Evil vanquished, objective complete, team back together happy ending. For them. Izumi finished the unspoken end to the sentence. What about you? Itachi snorted. What about me? Izumi rolled her eyes and stepped backwards. How do I look? Beautiful. She wasn't impressed. Is that what you know or what you see? 
I don't need to look. You're always beautiful to me. Her silence told him that the charm offensive hadn't worked, and he sighed. You are the most ravishing blurred outline I've ever laid eyes on. It's that bad? Without the sharing gun on, I operate mostly on sound and touch. He admitted. That's what his training with shuriken jutsu just now had been about. With it, I'm like a short-sighted civilian with bullet time and precognition. So you don't even know what I look like? He could hear the pain in her voice as she hugged him again. I told you. You're always beautiful to me. Plus I just substitute in what you look like naked, so prick. She laughed. But that's not all. How how's your illness progressing? He grimaced. Pulling one hand off her waist and holding it out in front of her, he released the iron control he'd held over it the whole time. It began to shake almost immediately. Tsunades looked at it. Says she's never seen it before. Some pathogen my immune system didn't know how to defend against, the kind of thing you get if you travel to other nations unvaccinated. Pretty sure I know where I got it too, not that it'll help me recover. Oh, Itachi Izumi grabbed the shaking hand in both of hers, as though with enough empathy she could calm the spasms. How how long do you have? Tsunade thinks I should be bedridden already. Weeks, at most. She clutched him tighter. I know, I'm sorry. I was thinking maybe I'd take Team 7 to Ground Zero, bring back samples of Don't Give Me Hope. She whispered. Not if you're going to take it away again. I'm sorry. They stood there a little bit longer. Does he ever want the truth to come out? Izumi asked, softly. Never. Itachi said. He'll be a demon if Hinata needs him to be. I've decided I will too. Tell the truth about some of it, but not all. If Niji wants to be struck from history, I damn well want to go with him. When will you admit it? I'm worried Sasuke has an idea already. He's been avoiding me since his visit to Orochimaru's hideout. But after. It will all come out in the will. Izumi choked back another sob. They stood there together, in the trees. Naruto and Sasuke sat perfectly calmly at the outskirts of Kanoha. This isn't a silly thing to do. Naruto decided. Oh no. Intelligent thing. Wise, even. Sasuke agreed. It has to be tested. It does. For research purposes. Even though the techniques are illegal. Even though... Because we're mature and responsible ninja. And it's not because we want to see who's is best. No, not at all. I hadn't even thought about that. Me neither. In fact, from a cooperative standpoint, we need to know how they react so we can use them together. Precisely. But we realize the dangers, which is why we aren't doing it ourselves. That's what the shadow clone technique is for. Exactly. This is very responsible of us. Are you two done making excuses? Sasuke's shadow clone called up to the pair, from his position down below. It and Naruto's clone were stood in the clearing where the two had dueled with Haku a few weeks ago. Of course, worthy scientists. Naruto waved down at them aristocratically. Please, proceed. As one, the two clones marshaled their chakra. Sasuke's built up the raisin kunai in its palm. Naruto's did the same with the raisin shuriken. Sasuke, get this on your sharingan for research purposes, I want a recording later. Naruto told his friend. All right, sacra scientists. Three. Two. One. Go. They charged, and in the center of the clearing, the jutsu met. Now, both teenagers has neglected to remember that fire and wind jutsu were like oil on water, and did not mix very well at all. At the base level, the raisin kunai struck the raisin shuriken dead center and imparted all the heat from its own chakra into the spinning blades. The fire release only intensified the kinetic energy of the wind release particles, forcing them to move more erratically and push against the shape being forced upon them. 
building pressure fought against the Naruto clone's chakra control. N1 Sasuke saw and was quickly able to perform a reverse summoning with the crows to pull himself and Naruto out of danger. Just before an absolutely massive explosion tore the entire surrounding area to shreds. All you handle this, then? Naruto and Sasuke both looked out over the crater in front of them. I think that went well. Sasuke remarked. Yeah, me too. Naruto agreed. There was a rustling in the trees, and they both turned to see Itachi drop to the floor behind them. You two are gonna wanna what the hell was that? He stopped to look aghast at the crater. We threw our new murder jutsu at each other. Naruto explained easily. They exploded. Right. Itachi blinked a few times, shaking his head. You okay? I'm fine, just upping your collective threat level a little. Naruto glanced across at Sasuke, who wasn't really paying attention. So what did you want? Oh yeah. Orochimaru's dead. Orokima Naruto stopped. Grinned. Hinata. In one of the great forests of the Land of Fire, not too far outside Kanoha, in fact, an owl flew purposefully over the treetops. Following that owl, not half a kilometer back, was a trio of ninja. We're gaining on her. Kudos reported, flying alongside them. Are you sure we should be doing this? Yugo asked. We were headed to Kanoha, weren't we? We were. Hinata agreed. But now Niji is here. Are you going to fight him in your state? Karen asked, looking her over worriedly. Look at you. Now isn't the best time to go for most Akatsuki killed in an hour. He's not getting away from me this time. Hinata shot back, stubbornly. For the love of there was a rustle of cloth. Here. Hinata turned to confirm what her Byakugan had just shown her. Karen held her bare arm out. If you're doing this, you're not doing it running on empty. I can't it isn't weakness to rely on your teammates, Hinata. Karen told her, tone brooking no nonsense. You're not forcing me. Bite the arm. Hinata glared for a moment, but relented. I still think this is a bad idea. Yugo warned them both, as Hinata leant in. It has trap written all over it. MMBLRGHLHRMPH, Hinata replied. What? She took her teeth out of Karen's arm. I said there's only so much he can do. I have to be a cook in. The only thing he could surprise me with is senjutsu or sage creatures, and I have one of those. Yeah, but he knows that. Yugo tried to explain. As do I, Hinata replied, simply. That's I mean won't he make his plans with that in mind? Perhaps, but I will tease she stopped. Kudos called, stopping the debate in its tracks. And, uh, there's I know. I see him. Hinata focused. A few hundred meters in front of her, presumably having just been summoned in by the owl, stood Hyuga Niji. Where is he? Hinata demanded, landing on a tree branch. Where is who? Niji replied, idly scratching the beak of an owl to his left. Don't fuck with me. She shot back. You're a clone. Really? What gave it away? Niji didn't turn to look at her. The lightning chakra in your body. You're rigged to explode. You noticed? I'm glad, I was keeping it subtle. You have made progress. Oh, you're patronizing me now? Cute. Hinata crossed her arms as Kudos, Yugo, and Karen landed behind her. Are you planning on telling me where the real you is, or do you just intend to taunt me? Let me know if it's the latter, I'll need to decide whether to work my frustrations out on you or just leave. You certainly didn't learn that sass from Orochimaru. Niji mused. Who taught that to you, I wonder? A better person than you'll ever be. Hinata replied, quietly. Well, probably. Niji whistled, and his owl desummoned. You want to know where I am? I do. 
Are you willing to work for it? More tests? Hinata raised an eyebrow. With every reason for you to turn tail and pop the moment I'm finished? I promise that I have every intention of giving you my location upon your completion of the following trial. He replied, simply. Oh. You're telling the truth. Hinata tilted her head. Niji smiled. I am. And you've just proven that your eyes have improved. Shit. Hinata allowed the white of the gokiai to spread across her eyes and face. They have. And now you have nothing else to hold over me. Nothing except experience, skill, and power. Hinata considered rolling her eyes, but realized it probably wouldn't be visible. We can gloat at each other for eternity. Nothing matters until one of us kills the other. Niji had the nerve to smile at her. Your words are betrayed by your body, cousin. Your heart rate is high and your muscles are tensed. You're afraid of me. And you're apparently a total creep. Karen mumbled. Looking with the Byakugan's not weird. Hinata and Niji both replied immediately, in unison, before turning to look at each other awkwardly. Yugo tried not to laugh. Niji sighed. You know what? Let's just skip to the test. Fight the owl. Fight the who? So you're certain she's here? Naruto asked. He, Itachi and Sasuke were all sprinting through the great forests outside of Kanoha. Nope. Itachi replied, simply. I'm certain that we're on the straight line between Kanoha and the hideout Orochimaru last lived at. Are you certain she'd come straight here? Yeah. Duh. Naruto replied, as though it was obvious. She promised. Then odds are that she'll see us before we see H. They were all interrupted by a subsonic boom that shook all the trees around them. The trio stopped, all looking forwards. Ah. Uh. Naruto squinted. Am I seeing things, or is that a giant fuck-off owl? Yeah. Sasuke finished. Off in the distance had appeared a massive navy blue owl, looking a lot like what Naruto remembered of Kudos. Itachi was similarly gobsmacked, muttering to himself. Icarus? What the hell, he's not supposed to be here why not? Sasuke asked, tilting his head at his brother. Things not going to plan? What do you mean plan? His brother defended, adequately. I'm surprised because that's Niji summon. What's he doing here? Twenty Ryo says fighting our teammate? Naruto pointed out. So maybe, you know, we go bail her out? Agreed. Itachi replied, eyes hard. I think me and my old teammate need to have a chat. The first attack came almost before Hinata could react. One moment there was nothing, the next there was a giant monster in front of her and it was swiping its wing sideways and a maelstrom of sharp feathers were being launched at her and her party. She remembered one of her first missions with Team 7, when attempting her rotation had thrown all of them away from her. Crap. 8 trigrams, 64 palms, protective. She declared, moving into her custom kata that incorporated the vacuum palm into its movements. Yugo and Karen both flinched, but all the approaching projectiles were blasted off course, with a plethora of loud booms. The hail stopped, and Hinata sucked a breath in. Charmed. She remarked. You'll be Icarus, I presume? I've been waiting a long time to meet you. The large sage creature sat back and looked down at her. Hyuga Hinata. It replied. The feeling is mutual. He looked a lot like Athena, understandable given their sibling status. He too wore a bow slung over his back, though both his eyes were intact. I had been asked to test you. He said. I trust you are prepared? You didn't feel the need to ask that last attack. Hinata pointed out, annoyed. Hmm, true. It spread its impressive wingspan and reached them backwards. Buffeting wind. Oh fuck Hinata dropped into a sprinter's start and ran. Icarus beat his wings and an enormous gale picked up, deafening everyone present, uprooting trees and stones and sending them hurtling through the air. 
Hinata minimized her surface area, had barely a foot off the floor as her legs powered her forwards through the wind. She darted left past a boulder, slid under a tree trunk that would have decapitated her, and suddenly there were no other obstacles between her and Icarus who had claws heavenly spin. Hinata felt her feet dig further into the floor as her dome withstood Icarus stomping down towards her, then with a roar she jumped and shoved his talons away. He staggered, for a moment, then recovered and looked down only to see a blur launch up and strike him under his beak. He beat his wings in a jump backwards, and looked up. His sharp eyes easily picked out Hinata against the sky. Curse mark glowing, she flapped her own wings, holding herself aloft at Icarus eye level. Then, with a battle cry, she tucked them and charged for him. To Itachi's genuine surprise, Sasuke was the one to spot Niji's approach first. Incoming! The younger Achiha shouted, and then there was a blur of motion as a kick collided into Itachi's forearms and Sasuke was catching a bolt of lightning into Naruto and Naruto was flexing his fingers and setting up a web of ceiling chains in front of the trio. Two Niji dropped to the ground before them. Oh no! Someone else that uses your bullshit technique. Sasuke whispered. You and Itachi both use shadow clones. Naruto hissed back. What's up shithead? Itachi called. Fancy seeing you here. I was about to say the same thing. One of the Niji spoke up. I'm a little busy back there, if we could maybe do this another time? Busy killing our teammate? Sasuke confirmed. Well, yes, essentially. Ah. See we can't exactly let you get away with that. A shame. And the Nijis moved. Itachi clashed with one of them, and they both vanished somewhere else into the forest, leaving the other to jump elegantly through the net of chains and charge for Naruto and Sasuke. What the fuck is this? Itachi hissed, mid-punch, when they were far enough away from the others. Not that I'm not happy to see you, but you're supposed to be dead. Niji blocked, and then slammed his fist through a nearby tree for appearance's sake. I was. Things have changed. He grimaced. Which one of you idiots sick Jiraiya on pain? Oh, fuck. Itachi fired off a fireball jutsu. He wasn't supposed to engage, he was scouting. Shit, is he still alive? Pain is. And that's just about all you need to know. Damn it, Jiraiya. Itachi grimaced, redirecting a vacuum palm. So how does that affect the plan? It affects it because Pain is pissed. He's going to attack Konoha. Niji warned. Itachi frowned, throwing a string of kunai. What, just Pain? Attack all of Konoha? Niji made a heavenly spin and deflected all the projectiles. He can do it. Or at the very least, my eyes say he's certain he can do it. He's not even afraid. And we still don't know what he does? Clueless. When's he coming? Niji grimaced. I don't know. Oh, F-U-C-K. Itachi stopped fighting entirely. You don't Niji shook his head. Any time. He said he needed to wait for his chakra to recover and make preparations, but I don't know if that'll take hours, days, or he's already on his way. Itachi sagged. We have got to get back there. Warn them. Tell them you let something slip, I don't know, do it, if you think it will help. Niji shrugged. But I can't let Hinata get involved. That's why you're still alive. Itachi realized. You're baiting her away from Kanoha. It was selfish. Selfish, and Hinata would hate Niji for it, but at this point that was par for the course. I feel obligated to ask that you stay away as well, the Hyuga started don't even fucking try. I'm gonna die anyway, Niji. May as well do it trying to take this guy down. I can throw out a few more Amaterasu at him before going blind. Hmph, <laughs> Niji smiled. That's so like you. He put his hands together. I'd say stay safe, but we both know you won't. So good luck. He vanished. Itachi sighed and ran back to his squad. Shadow Clone Jutsu. Chidori. 
Hinata conjured a doppelganger and charged it with lightning chakra. It practically became the Chidori, blitzing downwards towards Icarus trailing electricity. The owl was undeterred, unslinging his bow and swinging the thing like a staff. It had a diameter bigger than any tree Hinata had ever seen, and easily punted her clone out of existence. Then Icarus flicked his wrist, bringing out another of those sharpened feathers, and quick-firing it from the bow. Vacuum palm. Hinata, still flying, cast her counter, but the momentum in that feather was significantly higher than the ones he'd simply flung at her. She was blasted out of the sky, landing in a crash on the forest floor. This could be going better. Hinata. Are you I'm fine? Hinata grabbed the offered hand, letting Yugo haul her to her feet. He's just so big. Bow chica bow wow. Can it, Karen? She looked over at Icarus. He was almost half a kilometer away from her, but for a summon of his size that was still easy bow range. And you're the cousin of my summoner? He tooted, picking at his beak with one wing. How unimpressive. I'll end this quickly. He brought both wings to his bow. This is a derivative of a technique once used by Ninja Jesus' brother. Enjoy. Indra's arrow, miniature. Icarus drew the bow. There wasn't actually anything in it, at first, but as he pulled the thing taut a sparkling mass of glowing purple electricity formed and stretched. It was easily as long as the Hokage faces in Kanoa were tall. That is the miniature? Karen's mouth fell open. What the hell does the full technique look like? Not sure. Hinata squared her shoulders. Let's kill him in case we have to find out. You're going to try and top that? How? Karen pointed, emphatically. Hinata responded by activating her gokiai. Will that work? I have no idea. With that, Hinata charged. 500 meters wasn't much for her, either. Hinata had long surpassed fighting at the speed of sound, and she crossed the distance quickly, hoping to destabilize the technique before Icarus could fire it. Icarus noticed this, and fired it. With a sonic boom, the string of the bow snapped back into position, and the arrow blasted towards Hinata, who was flying straight at it. She stared down the approaching death bullet, and stretched her palm out to it. Hirajikoma. The world exploded into new color, and Hinata realized straight away that there was no way to snuff this out like she had Daidara's bomb. That hadn't actually detonated yet, but this already had enough energy to power Kanoha for a year, and it had to go somewhere. Hinata flicked her chakra and the entire technique disintegrated, its rigidly controlled structure falling apart into a mass of individual particulates of purple lightning. They all collided perfectly so as not to hit Hinata and she felt her feathers prickle uncomfortably as they all ionized her exterior, passing her by. And then she was through, and a massive wave of electricity was washing across the forest behind her towards Karen and Yugo. Meanwhile, Icarus wasn't quite so shocked as to lose his composure, and was swinging his bow at her with every intention to thwack her out of the sky. She grimaced and shut her eyes. Funny thing about bloodline techniques, since they were obtained naturally instead of carefully constructed, you basically had to come up with their names on the spot. Ah, uh, paralysis, Medusa, Crystal, freeze her eyes snapped open. Kesho Taketsu. Icarus bow stopped in place as great swathes of crystal sprung into existence around his wing, spreading across to envelop the right half of his body and then down to the floor, where it affixed itself to the earth and effectively stuck the summon in place. With some heaving, Icarus was able to shatter the crystal, but by that point Hinata had already flown up and above his head. Now there was the raging lightning wave to deal with. She conjured up a shadow clone, and with her eyes it easily substituted with some debris nearby Karen and Jugo. It faced the energy unflinchingly. Heavenly spin, lion fists. It declared, arms blazing blue with fire, forming a giant sphere. Disorganized and shattered as it was, the remnants of the Indra's arrow was easy pickings to have its chakra absorbed by the flames. In the center, the shadow clone screamed in pain, there was just so much chakra, and it immediately formed a scalpel from lightning and pierced its own heart, popping. Now, where does all that chakra go? 
Hinata, falling straight towards the recovering Icarus, had already formed a Chidori, and as the energy poured into her, she in turn channeled all of it into the technique, causing it to blaze into a giant cracking bolt larger than her, trailing electricity like a comet behind it as she blitzed down and struck Icarus right in the forehead. There was a flash that made the sky look black and the sun look dim. And then Icarus was gone, and Hinata fell, right arm blistered and smoking, to crash down onto the floor. Naruto was winning. He had no idea what to do about it. Niji's shadow clone was damn good, easily as proficient at taijutsu as Hinata had been, and she'd been using the first gate. But he and Sasuke had been panic training how to double-team someone like him, and that was paying off. Fifteen clones dogpiled Niji, he countered with some variant of the heavenly spin that popped all of them, then other clones wrapped the sphere up in chakra chains, and then suddenly Niji was out of the dome but being stopped by Sasuke's sword, and then the real Naruto was swinging his wrecking raisingan at Niji's back, to which the Akatsuki member pulled off some throw that put Sasuke in the way of the spinning ball only for Sasuke to vanish and be substituted for another Naruto clone, this one. Reeked with an explosive tag that went off immediately and should have killed Niji if he hadn't immediately substituted with a tree across the clearing, which Sasuke then lit a flame with a fire jutsu. All within one second. Naruto could hardly believe he was following what was going on, never mind participating, given the last time he'd encountered Niji Hyuga he'd been speed blitzed immediately. Looks like that training trip with Jiraiya was useful after all. Ha! Huh. You two have certainly come a long way since I last met you. Niji seemed to agree, continuing to survive their attacks unflappably. But I'm afraid that you're still not enough for me to let you near your cousin. Oh you do not have the right to tell anyone what they can do with your cousin. Naruto snapped back, still attacking. Actually, I got a lot to say to you. Do you have any idea what you did? I created an Avenger? Niji shrugged. You fucked up a perfectly good Hinata is what you did. Look at it. It's got anxiety. It's been hard enough dealing with my family drama and his abandonment issues. Sasuke joined in. Whatever brand of crazy she has is just icing on the fucked up team cake. Well. That is a lot of pent-up aggression. Niji slid to a stop and looked at them both. You two genuinely care about her, don't you? Even after all the times she betrayed you? Do you truly think she wants to return to Kanoha? She's our teammate. Naruto replied. But I guess you don't know what that means. Niji looked to the floor. I do. More than you realize. Noting that suspicious line down for future reference, Sasuke leveled his sword. Then you know we're going to go get her, even if we have to tear through you, and the rest of your merry band of sociopaths to do it. Niji paused, then nodded. Yes, actually. I do. He made a hand sign, and popped out of existence. Wind blew through the clearing. Ha! Huh. Sasuke remarked. I can't say I expected that to actually work. Nata. Hinata. Come on, you in there? Groaning, Hinata shook her head as Karen and Jugo pulled her to her feet. Beyond the pain, there was something wrong she couldn't quite place. Feeling a little dull? Niji's lightning clone replied, leant casually against one of the few trees still standing. Like your sense of touch or smell is limited? Lost feeling in your fingers or toes? Ah. That's it. Hinata glared at him, but didn't answer. It's the consequence of using the Gokiai. Niji continued, and Hinata knew he was telling the truth. You'll notice much of it revolves around what I call ivory. The more you use the Gokiai's powers, the more the ivory spreads into you. Mine hasn't quite reached my heart yet, but I'm relatively certain that when it does, it's game over. Consider that a precautionary warning. Where? Are you? Hinata gasped out, filing the information away, but in no mood for more games. She looked to either side, taking in her two friends, both relatively unharmed but shaken. I nearly got them killed. Yes, fair enough, I did promise you a reward. Niji replied, standing up properly. 
As he did so, Hinata worked her smarting chakra reserves to channel some power into her Byakugan, trying to get it back up after that last Chidori had almost emptied her. What she saw almost made her gasp. Naruto and Sasuke were right there. Only two or three kilometers away, and moving fast towards her through the forest. They'd they come for her she was interrupted as a Jinjutsu poked at her mental defenses, not trying to disguise itself. She allowed it and received a flood of information, the location of a small fortress elsewhere in the forest. This is where I am. He told her, which was a lie, or rather, this is where I will be that was better, in one week's time. I want exactly what you want, Hinata, one final fight. Come alone in seven days, and you can know. H.M.? Niji tilted his head at her. Hinata looked up at him and smiled. No. No, I don't think I will. He frowned, and she knew he knew she was telling the truth. You'd rather do a different time? I could reschedule, if you'd like listen, cousin. She told him, simply. With a pat on Karen's shoulder, she stood and bore her own weight. Suddenly, it felt like she'd gotten a lot lighter. I'm tired. You have been stringing me along my entire life. Do this, do that, get stronger, and maybe, oh maybe, I'll let you get your revenge. I've had enough of it. I'm not playing your games anymore. This is a one-time offer, Hinata. Niji warned her. I don't plan on giving you this chance again. I don't care. She laughed, pointing a finger behind herself. My teammates are coming right now. My teammates, who still believe in me, despite all the excuses I've made and all the times I've hurt them. I'm going to go back to them, and I'm going home. And maybe, after that, we'll team up and come and find you, and then we'll beat you. But we'll do it together. And no amount of vengeance or justice is going to change my mind. Niji stared at her, for a long time. After a few seconds, he started smiling, and Hinata would have sworn it was genuine. Wow. He told her eventually. That you have no reason to value this statement, but I am immensely proud of you. Thank you. Which is why I feel really bad about having to undermine the whole thing. Come again? I stole your bird. USD Hinata scanned her Byakugan and gasped. Kudos. That fortress. Seven days. You bastard. No going back to Kanoha, no talking to your friends, you come alone and we fight. His words slammed into her like punches. Do that, and I'll release him alive and healthy at the start. Fail to comply, and I'll kill him. You bastard Hinata shook, he was telling the truth you evil, manipulative bastard. Yep. He smiled. Toodles. With a pop and a brief flash of lightning, the clone vanished. Hinata staggered on the spot, choking back a sob. What do we do? Karen asked her. Hinata, what go? Hinata pushed her away, and instantly regretted it. Go, back to Leaf, show everything that just happened to Naruto and Sasuke Hinata go. Hinata screamed it. Just stay safe. I'll be back in a week, I swear, just one more week, no more delays, please believe me, we believe you. Juko put his hands on her shoulders, looking her in the eyes. Go. If you're not gone when they get here, he might say the agreement's void. You go recover, and then you kill that bastard, you understand? Slowly, Hinata nodded, regaining some control of herself. I will. Thank you. Tell tell Naruto and Sasuke whatever it is? They probably already know it. Get gone. Karen told her, smiling. Hinata nodded again. Then she turned, and once again ran. Ran away from her team, and towards Niji. Again, it made her sick. We're getting close. Naruto shouted, running past the first of an increasing number of destroyed trees. Make some clones to take point. Sasuke called back. That big owl's dead, but the real Niji might still stop. They stopped. Itachi appeared behind them, exhausted. Change of plans. We're going back to Kanoha. 
Right now. What? Naruto looked at him like he'd grown a second head. But Hinata's leave her. We need to go now. Itachi was visibly shaken. Sasuke turned to face his older brother and was glaring at him outright. You go off and chat with your old teammate and suddenly you're leading us away from him? What the hell's going on, brother? I am your superior. Itachi snapped and there was genuine killing intent radiating off him. And when a superior gives you an order in the field, you follow it. We're leaving now. Am I understood? For a second, Naruto and Sasuke looked at each other, genuinely weighing up open rebellion, when a sound from deeper in the woods caused all three to drop into a combat stance. Appearing out of the trees was a girl with long red hair, and a boy with short orange, arms raised, in surrender. Okay, first of all. The redhead grimaced. Hinata is really sorry. Seven days. So let's get one thing straight, Senjutsu is not the same thing as Sage Mode. Sage Chakra is a special type of chakra that surrounds and penetrates all living things. The sage creatures that many ninja form summoning contracts with are made out of the stuff. Normal ninja will never be able to actually interact with sage chakra, though, because just detecting it requires you to develop a whole other sense, like teaching a blind person to see. The only known way to access sage chakra is to train with groups of sage creatures, who, if they trust you enough to reverse summon you back to their realm, can teach you through various methods how to become attuned to it. Once trained, sages must absorb sage chakra from the environment, which takes a period of long minutes to short seconds of complete inactivity, time depending on the skill of the sage. Minato here, this is why I rarely ever use this thing, my strategy usually involves killing everyone so quick I don't have time to charge it. Using shadow clones is a great way to do so without leaving yourself vulnerable, though. Now, Senjutsu is the blanket term for any sage techniques. Sage chakra can be used to buff existing technique and give them special effects, or on entirely new techniques such as the Toad Sage's Frog Kata which gives them a bonus force field and an increased reach. Senjutsu by definition is really hard for normal ninja to deal with, because a, it's completely undetectable to them, b, if they absorb it they'll likely turn into an animal or statue, c, it can be used to counteract traditional elemental advantages, and because it provides a fuckton of other bonuses. Ninja who can use senjutsu can't necessarily use sage mode, however, as that ability is very exhaustive and requires exceptional physical condition. Jiraiya here, a bootleg version of this power can be used by those of less sound body by summoning in your sage creature friends and having them gather sage chakra for you while you fight. Downside is it's sloppier, harder to use the chakra for anything except physical enhancement, and you look hella ugly while doing it. Sage mode is the name of a power which involves using sage chakra to directly bolster your own body. It drastically increases strength, speed, durability and regeneration, but more importantly it gives you a perfect sense of everything around you. Blind, deaf, noseless and numb, you'll still know exactly where everything is, including chakra, and be able to react accordingly. That improved sense also turns inward, allowing you a better understanding of your own body so as to take better advantage of the previously described increased physical prowess. Plus you're effectively immune to any jinjutsu that isn't unblockable. The only downside is that this burns sage chakra at a ridiculous rate, but trust me, this will be the most amazing half a minute you've ever experienced. Which, incidentally, was what I told my wife the other night. He tl, dr it's super hard to get but it makes you wait better at literally everything. Excerpt from Onsen Jutsu by Hashirama Senju, Scribbles, by Assorted. The area around Hidden Rain was admittedly kind of fucked up. To cut a long story short, some forest land had been very quickly renovated into a new extension to the lake. Crashing down onto the surface of that lake was Jiraiya of the Sanin, or at least, about 90% of him. The other 10%, his right arm, plopped into the water a few meters to his left and sunk quite quickly into the depths. The rapidly waning power of his sage mode, now that Ma and Pa had been blasted back into Mount Mayaboku, was enough to heal over the wound, but not enough to grow him a new arm. Well, at least I can tell Tsunade I lost weight. He 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 fuck. Groaning, he forced himself to his feet, turning to look at his opponent. A young man with orange hair and purple eyes slowly flew downwards to touch onto the water's surface, looking across at him. 
Again, you come to rain country claiming to be peaceful. Payne said, calmly. Again, you bring only chaos. So I'm right, then. Jiraiya replied. You are Nagato. Neither of the others were ever that pretentiously philosophical, which means that Yahiko is dead, then. Payne nodded, sadly. He was killed, by Hanzo the Salamander. I use his body as the Deva Path of Pain to honor his legacy. Sounds creepy, but go off I guess. Jiraiya muttered, under his breath. I'm sorry about that. Our team couldn't kill him back when we were last in rain. You were too weak to enforce your will upon the world. Pain replied, solemnly. I was not. But you weren't strong enough to save your friend? Jiraiya asked. No. Payne lowered his head. I was not. I assure you, I will not make that mistake again. Oh, great. He's gonna kill me. Well, nothing to hold back for now. I only have one other question. Asked the Sanin, looking through the corpse's eyes to where he knew Nagato was watching. Which path of pain do you use to fuck Conan with? Pain blinked. What? Like, don't get me wrong, anyway is necrophilia, and even I don't write about that, but if you use Yahiko's body that's like double weird. I don't owe, oh, and another thing. Pain? Really? That's what you go with? What's WRI mean, the edge? Jiraiya winced. I think I just cut myself on it, actually. You may as well call yourself sad or death or ouchie an invisible force grabbed Jiraiya about the body and yanked him forwards, allowing pain to grab him by the throat. The body's eyes blazed with rage. You have no idea of the suffering I have, oh, monologuing. Yes. Jiraiya choke laughed. Let me guess, you also enjoy staring dramatically into the middle distance and pondering the meaning of life pain choke slammed Jiraiya onto the water's surface. His face broke under, and pain held him there, head submerged, until bubbles started to rise. Naruto and Sasuke bore the information about Hinata stoically. Jugo and Karen were understandably very nervous about their status as potential criminals, but Tsunade set them up with pardons and temporary housing almost without thinking about it. She had much more important things on her mind, if Itachi's report was to be believed. So, what do we do? Naruto asked, turning to his teammate as they all filed out. We wait for her. Sasuke replied, shrugging. It was difficult to see whether he was bitter or just distracted. It's what we've always done, isn't it? Naruto, stay behind. Tsunade ordered, before he was out of her office. I have something I want you to help me check. Huh? Sure, what is it? Despite hearing more unfortunate news about his teammate, Naruto still seemed positively chipper. Tsunade hated having to do this, but, well. Can you summon one of the toads for me? One of their elders, if possible. Ah, uh, sure. Naruto nodded, biting his thumb. What for? There Tsunade gulped. There's something I want them to confirm. I've received some intel on Jiraiya. Naruto expression brightened as he moved to bite his finger. Ah, awesome. Is he around? Is he good? Did he kick ass? Oh, Kami. Not from Jiraiya, Naruto. Tsunade lowered her head. Intel about him. About his condition. What do you mean? Wait, Granny, are you crying? One hour later. There was a knock on the door. Come in. Irika called, from his knees. He was a bit busy trying to unstick the latest trap from under his desk left by one of the students. This last one was pretty clever, but he's no Naruto. I'm afraid class is over, but I'm happy to answer any questions you might have. Unless this is a fellow member of staff, in which case, hey, Irika sensei Came a familiar voice. Irika banged his head on the desk, he got up, so fast Naruto? Once he took in the appearance of his visitor, he became even more surprised. Naruto looked exhausted, physically and emotionally. 
His hair was a mess, his posture was far south of its usual boundless energy, his eyes his eyes were red and puffy, as were his cheeks. Irika knew the signs of crying when he saw them. What happened? He asked his ex-student, quietly. Naruto tried to smile. Failed. Do you do you think maybe we could go get ramen? I'll pay, I just have got a lot I need to talk to someone about. I'll pay. Irika replied, already packing his things. And absolutely. Let's go. Hey, Dad? Sasuke asked, once he was certain they were alone in the Uchiha Dojo. Can I talk to you about something? H.M.? Fugaku looked over at him from a training dummy he was breaking into pieces. Sure, what is it? Is it girls? Finally? No. Sasuke replied, flatly, and he saw his father's eyes narrow. The man knew it was unlike him to entirely ignore banter. This is a village issue. An Uchiha issue. Oh. Fugaku fell out of stance and walked over, focused. All right. What is it, son? Sasuke blew a breath out. For years ago, he had made the tremendous leap required to admit he didn't need his father's praise, to allow himself to think his dad could do something wrong. What he was about to do was even harder. I am worried Itachi might be a traitor. And I don't know what to do about it. Fugaka looked at him for a long moment, but worryingly, didn't immediately call him crazy. I see. What evidence do you have? Nothing concrete. Sasuke admitted, backing up against a wall, to lean against it with his arms crossed. Bits and pieces, some of his actions just don't add up. I found a crazy complicated jinjutsu on two of our ambu, a Sharingan jinjutsu, and Itachi's the only one I know who could make anything like it. But that's inconclusive, and he sighed. It's Niji. It all comes back to Niji. Look, if Naruto betrayed my village and went on a killing spree, I don't know what I would do. I'd be heartbroken, devastated, I wouldn't believe it for months, and then I'd probably be out for his blood. But Itachi, he barely even acts like he dislikes Niji. And then there's the fact that every time they meet they always manage to have their little scuffles and never actually cause each other harm? The way he keeps managing to get all this information on the Akatsuki, yet he's never able to tell anyone where they are, or try and attack them? He must have a source on the inside. And just today, he seemed so surprised when Niji was there, and moments after they fought he's suddenly telling us we need to leave, get out of the fight? Why? I know this is all just conjecture, but he trailed off, unsure. Then Fugaku spoke up. Soon after the events of your Chunin exams, the Akatsuki members Kisame and Niji infiltrated Kanoha. This shouldn't have been possible. Kanoha has few injutsu wards up around it that alert us to any intruders. We know Niji can dismantle seals, but that isn't what happened, they were both detected entering, but detected as allies, not enemies. The only ones who could have keyed those two into the wards was a captain of our Ambu, or someone ranked even higher. And our Hokage was dead at the time. Sasuke raised his eyebrows in surprise as his father continued. Longer ago, at the night of the Hyuga massacre. Itachi was acting rebellious around that time as well. I wonder, has he told you Itachi has this power, the man Gekyo? Sasuke offered. His father looked surprised, but nodded. Sasuke let his eyes swirl out into their newer pattern, and that made Fugaku recoil in shock. Shit happened with Hinata. Sasuke explained, succinctly. The rules aren't as cut and dry as the Uchiha thought. Itachi's been teaching me about it. He said that Shursue commit suicide and he just felt responsible, that's why it awakened. Well, even if that's possible, the question becomes whether to believe him. Fugaku pointed out. And then, days later, the Hyuga were slaughtered. Niji may have been a prodigy, but I'm not sure he could have killed his entire clan. Hinata's father was powerful, and many of the Hyuga branch family were Umbu level. I know Itachi couldn't have bested me at that age not without the man Gekyo. You think Itachi helped with the Hyuga massacre? Sasuke gaped. I've had suspicions for years. Fugaku replied, pacing. 
but suspicions only, and never proof. And he was always close friends with the Hokage, practically untouchable. But now events seem to be spiraling quicker and quicker towards something incredibly bad for our clan. And, with your eyes Fugaku paused and looked at him. We may have the ability to actually enforce our justice. The unspoken point, that Sasuke would have to fight his brother, hung heavy in the air. Sasuke gulped and continued. So what do we need? What can we do that proves or disproves whether or not he's betraying us? I don't know. Fugaku replied, simply. It's been weeks since I've seen him, months since I've spoken to him, years since we've discussed anything meaningful. You, though, Sasuke. You've been working with him for almost half a decade. Do you have any idea where we could start? Sasuke paused. Thought. I, I have one idea. The situation is disturbing, but not hopeless. Said the Toad Elder, pacing. He was only about a foot tall, and sounded like a toddler addicted to cigarettes. Jiraiya was able to discern how pain fought, and transfer that knowledge onto us, before we were last eliminated. With this knowledge, we may be able to construct a strategy with which to defeat pain, and from there are you even listening to me boy? Naruto didn't look up. Mount Mayaboku was quiet at the best of times, but here at the peak, the boy and the toad were the only two individuals within kilometers. Birds chirped softly in the distance. Pa huffed. I said, are you he's dead? Naruto's blunt response pulled the toad up short. Sat on the floor, he stopped picking at the pebbles to look up with empty eyes. Jiraiya's dead, and you don't care? Pa coughed, though warbled may have been a more accurate word. I do care. Jiraiya was one of the best summoners we've ever contracted, and I'd like to think he was a friend. But moping isn't going to help us avenge him. Humph. Naruto looked back down at the dirt. Got it. You say that's so sad, and then you move on. Well, this is my first time with something like this, so sorry if I'm not so good at handling it. I keep. Talking. I'm listening. Naruto began drawing in the dirt. H.M., very well. Pa resumed pacing. Jiraiya made it very clear that you are to be his successor, and you've had good experience with us in the past, though many of our members have been annoyed at your questionable nicknames. He glanced across to see if Naruto had smiled at that. He hadn't. Considering this, we've agreed to bring you here, to Mount Mayaboku. Here is where, if you are willing, you will learn Sage Mode, one of the most powerful techniques any ninja can learn. With that, and the proper plan, we believe you may be able to defeat pain. All right then. Naruto replied. His tone was still completely flat, devoid of any emotion. Looking down, he found he had drawn Kanoha's leaf insignia in the floor. Where do we start? Tsunade thinks we might not have much time at all before pain attacks us again. Pa scoffed. Hmph. I hardly think you will be able to achieve this in a matter of weeks. Sage mode takes years to learn, even for experienced ninja, Jiraiya was only capable of an imperfect version of the form after decades of practice, though his was perhaps due to a poorer physical condition on his part. Poor relative to Hashirama Senju or Namike's Minato, that is. Oh no, a technique that took Jiraiya and the fourth years to learn while I only have days. However, will I cope? Naruto replied, checking that he could still summon the Raisin and giving the toad a pointed look, before standing up and putting his hands together. Multi-shadow, oh no, it won't be that simple. Pa shook a finger. There's only so many shadow clones you can form at once, while activating sage mode. Why? Well it's all about accumulating senjutsu, or sage, chakra. Pa explained. You absorb it from the surrounding area, and then use it in combat. But there's only so much of it in any given area, even in places as senjutsu dense as this. If you know what you're doing, 50 shadow clones absorbing it isn't going to drain a place faster than one or two. And there's the fact that if you start splitting sage chakra among your shadow clones there's less for you to use yourself. Sounds exploitable, but all right for now. Naruto frowned. Surely having 300 shadow clones would be useful for detecting the chakra though, right? 
Well, sure, but that's only stage one. Eh, whatever. Naruto made the seals, and the duplicated popped up around him, but he gestured dismissively to them. All this? It's not the reason I learn stuff so fast. Then how? Pa asked, curiously. Simple. Naruto shook out his shoulders. I just refuse to accept a version of the world where I haven't succeeded, and I work like hell until the world gives in. Izumi Uchiha was walking along a woodland pathway when a call of, hey, beautiful, stopped her. She turned around and smiled. Hello to you. You're looking better than when I last saw you. He was, actually. Some of the tiredness seemed to be gone from Itachi's eyes as he walked over to her and gave her a quick kiss. Thanks. Your new outfit's pretty nice as well, I like the buckles. She tilted her head. You told me last time you couldn't see that detailed. After a moment, he tilted his head right back to match her. Now Izumi. What kind of ninja would I be if I gave away all my secrets? She laughed and reached forwards to wrap him in a hug. She went for a deeper kiss, but he stopped her, looking away awkwardly. What's wrong? She asked, worried. This last mission. Itachi told her, sighing. It didn't go as we planned. Izumi wasn't sure what to do with her face, this sounded like good news, but the way Itachi delivered the statement made it sound like he was still in cover mode. Not as planned how. We weren't able to recover Hinata? No. He sighed. Niji was there. Well of course Niji was there, dumbass, is he still walking? Some of her irritation must have shown on her face. He smiled and told her, relax. I've put shadow clone guards up around us, nobody's going to hear what we're saying. Is he alive? She asked, immediately. Is who? Is Niji, dammit Itachi, now's not the time to be funny. Yes, he's alive. He reassured her, and she let out a breath. Thank Kami. Does that mean he's given up on his stupid plan with Hinata? Or did something go wrong? You don't know? Itachi asked her, staring. Of course I don't know. She frowned. You're acting weird today, Tach. What's going on? Itachi paused for a moment, then shrugged. Eh, uh, well, I suppose that's enough. And then he vanished. Standing a few feet behind him, looking her dead in the eyes, was Sasuke. Oh fuck. Jinjutsu. She drew a kunai and activated her Sharingan, just in time for almost a dozen other Uchiha to drop down around her, fully armed and in uniform. Another moment, Fugaku dropped in behind Sasuke's shoulder. No. Izumi whispered. She's in on it. Sasuke said, not breaking eye contact with her. We were right. Itachi was conspiring with Niji. No. Sasuke no. Izumi stepped forwards, but a few sets of razor wire wrapped around her arms and legs, immobilizing her. It's not what you think, he wasn't, you visited his bedside. Sasuke snarled, face snapping from controlled to enraged in a fraction of a second. Remember? Back when I first learned you and him were a thing? He stalked over to her, putting his face within inches of hers. I was there to support my brother. You were there consorting with a terrorist. Her mouth hung open. Sasuke turned away. I want this bitch in a cell. Fast. Somewhere nobody will notice, and you idiots better be quick about it because we've got a small enough window to catch Itachi unawares without you tipping him off early. No, don't fight him. Izumi begged, tears on her face. Please, Sasuke, you're the one person you won't be able to fight. I know. Said the youngest Uchiha Sion, not looking back at her. I'm counting on it. Niji sat on a throne in the center of the fort. It was an old hideout for some clan or another, long abandoned, but over the last fortnight or so he'd done some spring cleaning, getting rid of all the clutter. Turning it into a perfect arena. Not gonna lie, you look pretty dope sat on that. 
Itachi's shadow clone said, walking up to him. Right? Niji agreed, trying a variety of poses. I'm trying to go for intimidating, but not trying to be intimidating. Like, I'm perfectly relaxed, but I'm exuding menace. Itachi sat himself on the floor, looking up at his friend. And then, what, sit in that exact pose and wait for Hinata to arrive? Well, she'll only be a few hours now. Niji shrugged. And you don't have to worry about getting a sore arse when you've lost feeling in most of your body. Important to look at the upsides. Exactly. Oh, wait, I've got something for you. Niji reached into a pocket and pulled out a storage scroll, which poofed into a book he then chucked at Itachi. I finally got round to writing out my dossier on your condition. Itachi raised his eyebrows, catching the book and flipping it open. Wait, seriously? That was the longest long shot on my long shot list. I have the best eyes for dissection in the world, and you doubted me? Niji chuckled. Read through that, burn it, pop and send the info to Tsunade. She might be able to fix you up. You are literally a lifesaver. No problemo. No, seriously man. Thank you. Niji just smiled. Itachi sighed and flopped onto his back. I am contractually obligated to ask you, one last time, to live. No. Talk to her. You two can have perfectly honest discourse, people could resolve wars with this power, and what happens when she finds out? That everything she knows is wrong? She'll have a full-on panic attack. That's not what this is about, and you know it. You've already given me permission to tell her the truth if I have to. I am a king killer, Itachi. Niji told him, meeting his eyes. It's been a decade, and I still see their faces when I try to sleep. The only reason I've been able to keep going is to prepare for this moment. I can't live like this anymore, Itachi. I'm sorry. Not for her, not even for you. The fort was quiet for a few more minutes. Do you think we did good? Niji asked, eventually. I think we always tried. Itachi replied, honestly. And mostly, yeah. Think anyone's done better? Probably. But I bet nobody's been perfect. Itachi sat up. If I survive all this, I guess I'll tell you later how it went. H.N. Niji looked up. She's on her way. Sure, you want to stay and watch? I couldn't live with myself if I didn't. He stood up and looked across at his best friend. Niji, I love you, man. Gay. Niji snorted, trying not to cry. I love you too. Itachi paused, then darted in and wrapped his best friend in a hug. They stayed there for a few seconds, then Itachi walked off to disguise himself as a pebble or some such and sit in the corner of the room. Niji got comfortable in his chair and waited for the last battle of his life. Family Matters Number 1 The owls were not shutting up. That was the third thing Hinata noticed upon entering the hideout. The first was Niji, obviously, and that took up about 99% of her attention, and the only other facts that made it to be noticed were that a, there was a brick in one wall that was definitely another ninja in disguise, and b, the owls would not shut up. There must have been over a hundred of them sat in the rafters, sage creatures all, some of which she even recognized or had summoned herself. They chatted constantly, some in hushed whispers, some in loud, unapologetically heated debates, as Hinata made her way into the central chamber. There, perfectly relaxed but exuding menace, was Niji Huga. Cousin. He addressed her. Cunt face. She replied. Rude. I am very much beyond rude at this point. You've had me stewing in my own rage for a week straight while you hold my friend captive. Hinata's glare could have etched glass. You'd better give him back right now, or I swear to Kami relax. Niji emphasized. He snapped his fingers. A door behind her on her left opened. Making sure to keep her Byakukan trained on him, Hinata turned and gasped. Kudos. M. Mistress? 
sat there in a small room, scribbled with seals, presumably to stop him desummoning. Kudos looked like absolute shit. His posture was hunched, his feathers were ruffled, and one eye was swollen, held forcefully shut. Mistress, is that you? It's me, Kudos. I'm here. Hinata dropped to her knees next to him and enveloped him in a hug, heedless of the obvious target she presented to Niji. By the sage, Kudos, what did he do to you? Did something funny with my eyes? Kudos shivered in her arms. But other than that, he didn't hurt me. He just kept me in there. Kudos was big, but Hinata was strong, and it didn't take much effort to pick him up and carry him out of the room. Can you get back home now? Kudos squinted with his one good eye. Mm, I think so. Are you staying here? I am. Kick his butt, mistress. Don't worry. I will. Hinata gave him a reassuring smile. Hesitantly, Kudos put his claws together and vanished in a puff of smoke. Hinata turned and looked back at Niji. You, you're evil. Aren't I, though? Niji smiled and stood up. At that, all the owls in the rafters suddenly went silent. So, what's your reason? Hinata asked, performing some last-minute stretches. Why all this? Tell me, Hinata, have you figured it out? He replied with another question. How the Gokiai is acquired? Hinata nodded. Eventually, yes. While the Sharingan requires you to kill an ally, the Byakukan requires you to be spared by an enemy. Quite. And I trust you remember how I developed mine? It was me. Hinata whispered. When father attempted to kill you and ordered me not to intervene, and yet I saved your life. Precisely. Niji beamed. I suppose I should thank you for making all this possible. Not that I'm blaming you for the massacre, of course, I'm keeping full credit for that. Is that why I was spared? Hinata asked him, some desperation leaking out into her voice. After so long, she needed to know. Was some misplaced sense of gratitude why you let me live? I'm afraid not. Niji replied, calmly. You see, Hinata, I told you earlier that the Gokiai's powers cannot last forever that they have consequences for the person who wields them. By the end of this battle, it's entirely possible that Gokiai overuse will have killed me. However, he pointed. Straight at her. There is a way to negate this. With the eyes of another Gokiai user, those of a close family member, one can gain the power to use the Gokiai indefinitely, with greater power and a reduced cost. Why do you think I spared you? Bid you get stronger? Now, here you are. And whoever leaves here will have eternal access to one of the strongest eyes on the planet. Hinata shook her head in disgust. That's all it is? That's all it ever was? You wanted more power? He tilted his head. Would you believe me if I told you I was trying to save the world? It wasn't a direct statement, so she couldn't tell if he was lying. No, she settled into a gentle fist stance. I didn't think so. He fell back into one himself. Are you prepared? I've been prepared for the last ten years. Then the question I asked you ten years ago still stands. Hinata Huga, do you believe you can change your fate? The following battle would take place entirely within the ensuing sixty seconds. Itachi was sat alone in the forest when Sasuke found him. The elder Uchiha brother had a wide cloak around his shoulders, and a blade of grass on his lips, and was trying, unsuccessfully, to blow a tune into it. PFTHFFFFFT. He said, in greeting. That is definitely not how you're supposed to do that. Sasuke remarked, dryly. Itachi looked at him. Frowned. Put down the leaf. Something's up. What? Oh come on, you did not figure that out from my just sassing you. I always sass you. Sasuke protested. You'd be surprised what you pick up about someone when you look at them with the Sharingan most days for four years. Itachi replied, staring hard. You, little brother, are absolutely furious. What's happened? 
Sasuke considered letting the farce play out longer, but gave up. There had never been any hope of him lying to Itachi. Traitor. He said, simply. Ah. Itachi replied. He sighed, and stood up. Did you hurt Izumi? No. She's in prison. Thank you. She's not guilty of anything. Except keeping secrets? Except that, yes. Will I be allowed to explain myself? Sure, Sasuke replied, from prison. We both know this village doesn't have a prison that can hold me. Itachi looked up and fixed his gaze on the middle distance. But I imagine that's your plan, isn't it? Any opportunity to kill me would be good for you. After a moment, Fugaku faded into appearance where Itachi was looking. We don't want to kill you. But we will, if you won't come peacefully. Well, that's a crock of shit and you know it. Itachi turned back to Sasuke. I'm not supposed to tell you this, but Fugaku and Echiha were planning a coup d'etat back when I was twelve. They had every intention of killing the Hokage and taking over the village. Sasuke weighed up the information. Thanks. I'll deal with that later. Did you help kill the Hyuga? Itachi's eyes narrowed. Yes. Have you been consorting with Niji this whole time? Yes. Why? I'm not going to tell you that while Niji is still alive. Great. Sasuke drew Rado. You ruined one of my teammates' lives. Surrender or I will kill you. Would you believe me if I told you it was to help save the world? Itachi asked. Sasuke thought about it. No. I didn't think so. Itachi turned to face Fugaku. If I die here, make sure this asshole doesn't get my eyes. Then his Sharingan flashed. Kagatsuchi. Sasuke thought, and the Amaterasu flames that blossomed on Fugaku's body didn't harm him, they all flew harmlessly away and coalesced in Sasuke's palm. He raised an eyebrow at his older brother, pointedly. Worth a shot. Itachi shrugged. Then Sasuke flung the black fire from his palm in the form of dozens of shuriken, and Itachi conjured a clone that transformed into a large wooden barricade, and the moment the spray touched it it exploded in a bright flash, and in the brief moment of blindness Fugaku had to use sound alone to block Itachi's taijutsu attack, and then the fight was on. The good thing about a battle between two Byakugan users was that neither bothered to waste time with Jinjutsu. They just charged. Hand signs flashed and three Hinata slammed into three Niji, hands blurring between them like wind dancing around mountains. There was one pop, and another, and then the poof of a substitution jutsu and another pop, and then Hinata was stood back in the position of her safety clone looking out at three perfectly intact Niji. Fuck, that was quick. He's better than me at the gentle fist. Five years of experience, remember. Niji tutayed. He sprinted towards her again and was met with an explosion. Hinata pulled her right hand back to the satchel she'd summoned at her hip, and threw a kunai with her left. Then threw another with her right, and another with her left, and explosions rocked the hideout. Owls took off, screeching, as the walls shook and dirt was thrown up and Niji jumped, span, and twisted like a madman to avoid the detonating projectiles Hinata threw at him at a rate roughly equivalent to a high-caliber chain gun. If the bastard was going to give her seven days, she was damn well going to make the most of them. And if ever there was a time for it, spend all your money and use all your consumable items, this was it. Naruto had said it best. You can never have too many explosive tags. Eventually Niji twisted into a heavenly spin, which he did on his hands, by the way, and Hinata planned on attacking with something that had more punch, but he beat her to it, shooting a bolt of lightning from the inside of his dome aimed straight at her heart, all while somehow keeping his clones in the dome with him. How are they, oh, putting out chakra in sync with him so the flow goes around them, didn't know that was possible, noting it down Hinata used the same technique she'd used against Sasuke, catching and splitting the bolt with a flicker of lion fist goodness and channeling it around her but this time she didn't fire it straight back. She shot it in almost a cone in front of her, in what must have looked like a poorly controlled burst, but that didn't matter because she wasn't aiming to penetrate the dome with it. Hundreds of shards of metal, remnants of her throne kunai buried in floors and walls, were suddenly lit up with electricity. 
Lightning sparked across the ground, through the air, darting past the dome to strike Niji in the A blink, and then his two clones transformed into large metal rods, catching and grounding all the lightning before it could hit Niji. They both popped, and Niji idly brushed some debris off his cloak. Are you afraid yet? He asked. No. She replied. You're telling the truth. He mused. Good for you. Problem is he looked her in the eye, you really ought to be. And then everything went white. The forest outside Kanoha was pretty fucking on fire right now my dudes. Itachi was following a well-tested Uchiha strategy of well, being outnumbered doesn't matter as much if the terrain doesn't let them double-team me, and the terrain doesn't let them double-team me if the terrain is fire. Sasuke jumped between burning trees, throwing a brace of shuriken at Itachi's form as it blitzed past him, then glared and used his kagetsuchi to grapple a large plume of Amaterasu, yanking it away from where his father was also executing some calculated arson. Oh yeah, Amaterasu is everywhere too, thanks for that Itachi. Everything was either red as the blood of angry men or black as the dark of ages past, and all of it was hot as hell. Weird, Itachi doesn't usually owe, oh, whatever, not important. Sasuke unrolled a spool of razor wire, and no. That was important. He chased the thread of thought back to its root, and growled. Oh, very clever. Of course, Itachi couldn't use Amaterasu to such an outrageous extent without going blind. Ergo, this wasn't happening. And the tricky shit had put a little bonus Jinjutsu in to make Sasuke avoid thinking about the plot holes. He snapped out of the illusion just in time to see Itachi swinging for his head with a sword, and barely got his own up to block it. A vague note of amusement bubbled to the surface of the rage when he realized that they were both using one half of Rado. Note to self, claimed that off his corpse. He twisted his brother's blade away, parried another five quick strikes, then reposted, his blade sliding harmlessly over Itachi's shoulder while his elbow came around to punt him in the face an explosive shadow clone or rapid substitution got Sasuke out of the range of the bang, immolating a poor tree branch, and then he used his razor wire like a grapple to yank himself leftwards, to where Itachi and Fugaku were dueling. Another quick fireball split them apart, and then Sasuke was above Itachi, opening his arms and unleashing a blitz of shuriken. Itachi responded in kind, and the air was turned sharp as flashes of steel collided, intersected, fell harmlessly or thunked into trees. One grazed Sasuke's cheek, another made a gash in Itachi's leg. Then Sasuke finished falling, and crashed down on Itachi just as Fugaku charged in from the side, and they blurred together in a crush of steel, and then Itachi caught Sasuke with a heel to the back of his neck and knocked him flat unconscious on the floor, turning to focus on Fugaku and reminding the elder that, hey, maybe taking on your young, fit, genius prodigy son is much easier alongside your other young, fit, genius prodigy son and not alone as a man who is at best really good at being a ninja, pathetic, right? Of course, that wasn't what was actually happening. Fugaku must have noticed when a Jinjutsu Itachi started completely ignoring his completely okay little brother, but professionally didn't react, letting Sasuke set up a web of traps, and then charge in from behind with a Chidori aimed right at Itachi's back. Itachi turned around and caught Sasuke's arm. You do realize I wasn't caught by any of that, right? He remarked, calmly. Sasuke bared his teeth and kept fighting. The fight went on to last about three minutes, but when you're a ninja who surpassed the speed of sound during the Chunin exams and your APM varies between a hundred and a thousand, three minutes can feel like a lifetime. The initiative waxed and waned, techniques were traded, Itachi's reserves gradually ran low until he was forced to pull out the Susanoo. After that, it was only a matter of time. The orange armor cracked, then fell away, allowing Sasuke in to bury a Chidori in his elder brother's stomach. Itachi gave one last witty remark, smiled, did that thing with the forehead poke he'd like to do throughout Sasuke's childhood, and died. And Sasuke cried for him. He was too exhausted to deal with Fugaku's explanations or complaints, putting his brother's body in a storage scroll and leaving at an unhurried walk. It was only hours later, sat in his room, that he realized something was wrong. As an exercise, he threw up a Jinjutsu on himself, wiping his own memory and replaying through the events from an unbiased point of view. Lo and behold, the fight had gone exactly how he'd expected it to go. Because that's all it had been. An expectation. Itachi hadn't done anything Sasuke hadn't known he could. 
From the initial Jinjutsu war, to the Kenjutsu fight, to the fire, to the Mangekyo to the fact that Sasuke hadn't been able to surpass his brother, just wear him down. Everything had been exactly as he'd expected it to be. That was what the Jinjutsu had been made out of, after all. Sasuke paused, sighed. And then screamed aloud, and shattered his reality like glass. He was back at the beginning of the fight, but this wasn't real either, was it? He broke through the Jinjutsu, then broke the next one, then the next, then the next, then the overarching Jinjutsu that was putting all the other ones in front of him, then the one above that and the one above that, but it didn't matter, there would always be more, illusion after illusion wrapping around him like a nice warm blanket that he was too afraid to shrug off, like suffocating in his bedsheets during a dream, because it didn't matter how much he thought he was fighting, at the end of the day he would never be able to get over the idea that Itachi would always be there, like some omnipotent Oni and deity that he couldn't possibly defy, because how could Itachi ever be wrong but he was. And Sasuke was sick and tired of trusting him. Something very important deep inside Sasuke broke. And with it, a red moon shattered into stardust. Sasuke came to in the clearing, and judged that about two seconds had passed since the fight had really started. Fugaku was already bleeding from multiple cuts, and was currently restrained in a web of razor wire. Evidently half a millisecond from stabbing his father in the gut, Itachi was staring at Sasuke in honest, gaping, mangekyo-eyed surprise. Stop. Lying. To me Sasuke told him. Well. Itachi, for the first time Sasuke had ever seen, gulped. You just broke out of the Tsukiyomi, so I'm not even sure lying's possible anymore. Cute. Remarked Fugaku, offhandedly. And then his eyes shifted pattern, and black flames blasted forth. Oh, son of a bitch, I forgot about Kokosora. Hinata spun around in the emptiness, trying to remain calm. All right, what do we know? One, time isn't dilated in here, so we have about a second before he pulls my eyes out. Great. 2. Total sensory deprivation for an unknown timescale. At least several weeks, not that I'll survive the next two seconds anyway. So, breaking it. She stretched her eyes. Frowned, and stretched them further. Nothing. There was just nothing. Mind-bendingly, maddeningly, nothing, for as far as she could see in any direction. More worryingly, there wasn't even a her. Her base eyes told her she floating in space, but she wasn't, her Byakugan couldn't even see her own body, they didn't even have a reference point as to where they were, and her nausea grew as she was provided no sensory data to even suggest that she existed calm down, girl. Think. What can we do that Itachi Uchiha can't? Hinata exhaled, grimaced, and thought Hera Jacoma. It certainly felt like the clarity was there, but there was no change in what she saw. While any other technique would have bloomed out into endless complexities of chakra threads, the Kokosora was still just plain nothing. No weak points, no strong points, nothing but an endless emptiness stretching out into eternity. Of course. This Jinjutsu was meant specifically to target those with an over-reliance on Dojitsu. My eyes won't help me here. Hinata was certain a second had passed, maybe Niji was taking his time, confident she wouldn't escape? What had he said be afraid? Be afraid of what? Him? The technique? Was he cryptically giving her a hint or did she try and do the opposite of what he said? What was she afraid of? Only the nebulous. She was afraid of hurting her teammates, afraid of dying because of what that would mean for the world, but that didn't seem relevant here. What were normal people scared of? The dark. It was a small, innocent, almost hysterical thought, but it stuck and Hinata turned back to it. Plenty of people were scared of the dark, but not the Hyuga. It didn't matter to them how dark it was, they saw chakra. And yet there was the cursed seal to stop the removal of their eyes. There was the hiding of the Byakugan secrets to stop people developing counters. The Hyuga clan was terrified of its own special brand of darkness, the darkness that came when the eyes you were so proud of were somehow rendered useless. It's a riddle, if you like. Who's more afraid of the dark? Someone with the sharpest eyes in the world or a blind man? Hinata turned off her Byakugan. Still white. She closed her eyes. 
black now, but still useless. Do you really think I should be afraid of you stealing my eyes, Niji? I'll kill you blind if I have to. She opened her eyes, grinned, and then reached up and tore both Byakugan out. Hinata came back to her senses 1.465 seconds after going under, not having even had time to fall over. Niji was barely a foot in front of her, hand outstretched towards her, yet when he saw her reopen her eyes his own widened in what looked like genuine shock. Glad that worked. She muttered to herself. I'd have felt an utter imbecile if it hadn't. There was a crack and a blur of blue, and her palm slammed forwards and took Niji in the chest, sending him flying backwards to crash into his throne. And you're wrong. Hinata looked up at him, curse mark activated, flexing her wings. I'm not the one who should be afraid. So? Conan asked, impassively. What's the plan of attack? There isn't one. The Deva Path of Pain admitted, walking up to the gates of Kanoha. I'm going to enter and use the human path of pain to eat people's memories until I find where the QB is. Sounds well thought out. A plan is just a list of things that can go wrong. This from the man who made the most complicated world takeover plan in the history of the planet. Conan waited for a reaction, didn't get one, and frowned. Oh, damn, you are pissed. I am. The Deva path wasn't showing much in the way of expressions. You know you're going to hurt a lot of people. I do. Are you going to give the civilians a warning? Payne paused. Nodded. Yes. They'll get a warning. He cleared his throat, walked towards the gates, and held his hands out. Breathe in. Some Lady Tsunade. Shizen burst into the Hokage office, you won the lottery. Tsunade froze. Do you mean the Kanoha? No. The International Lottery. Shizun was beaming. That was one in a billion chance, my lady. You're so lucky. Tsunade shook and slowly turned to look through her window. As she watched, the gates to the city exploded, nearby houses collapsing with bodies and shards of wood being scattered across the streets along with the echoing call of body once told me the world was gonna roll me, I. Family Matters Number 2 Well, if the hideout had had a ceiling at one point, it was fucking gone now. There was a veritable eruption, as Niji was blasted up through brick and mortar, followed by an irate Hinata Alf trailing lightning. She slammed two Chidori lion fists up at him, which he deflected with his bare palms, Kami knows how, and then spun an axe kicked her back down to land in a crash on a high point of the structure. She prepared herself for his falling attack, then started as he instead substituted with some debris and appeared beside her with another palm strike. She caught it on her forearms, sliding backwards, and then rapidly stripped off the explosive tag he'd stuck to her and threw it to explode between them and deter his follow-up, then swerved to dodge the falling piece of debris he'd substituted with and then beat her wings to fly up above the chakra scalpel he'd swung at her head. She span upside down midair, grabbed his arm, and pulled. He used a tree-walking technique to stick to the floor, but she pulled hard enough that the floor came too, two chunks of concrete stayed attached to his feet as she bodily flung him off towards one of the hideout's tall pillars, deadening a few of the chakra points in his arm while she was at it. Niji kicked the two concrete blocks at her while he was flying, which she deflected without much difficulty, and then landed on the pillar with a much less chill expression than he'd held earlier. Note to self, remove her Orochimaru possessed birdie powers. He said to himself, out loud, as he struck his one arm with the other a few times, reopening the damaged chakra roots. Hinata glared at him. Chidori. She said, making a long list of hand seals. Onyx thunderstorm. Come take a look at what this curse mark can really do. Lightning crackled, and Hinata split into ten, and each one of those ten fed just about all of its chakra into their curse marks. The sage creatures still in the area shivered, as they felt all the residual Senjutsu chakra get sucked out of the air all at once. The ten hianta were enveloped with black lightning and flew. Niji adopted a well-respected ninja strategy called running for his fucking life as bolts of lightning began to strike the hideout from all directions, clouds formed and darkened as the localized electricity ionized the air and started affecting pressure differentials, and the area became a veritable web of electricity. 
Niji sprinted, substituting with debris and dodging behind and around pillars to keep away from the ranged attacks, then had to jump away as one of the Hinata dive bombed his location with a Chidori, causing a giant explosion that bodily flung him across the roof. He barely had a chance to land before another Hinata tried to crash into him, and another, and another, the shadow clones far outspeeding the lightning they could produce as they made mad kamikaze dashes at their opponent. By the third Niji's hair was singed, by the sixth his Akatsuki cloak had been shredded, and by the ninth he was bleeding outright from myriad wounds and had developed an odd tremor in one hand, presumably from the electricity. And there was still one opponent left. Hinata, the real Hinata, screeched to the sky before charging down towards him, marshalling her energy to form a black-tinted Chidori big enough to remove most of his torso. And this time, Niji didn't dodge. He clenched one fist, and a dark blue lion's head burst into existence around it. He held up his hand, moved into a defensive stance, and waited. And then Hinata collided into him, and knew she'd won. The lion fists were one of the most difficult Hyuga arts, they allowed the user to drain chakra with nothing but an incredibly complicated disruption and absorption array that conveniently looked like a really cool lion's face. But one thing Hinata knew for a fact that they could not do, having trained under Orochimaru for years, was drain sage chakra. And that was exactly what she was pouring through her arm and into his. His eyes narrowed in pain and his mouth opened in a silent scream as the skin on his arm burned, flaking off to leave a blood-red layer underneath and then burning that off too as the black lightning tore at the limb. But he didn't move. And his other arm came round. Oh shit there was nothing Hinata could do as Niji brought his left hand up, placed it on the back of her neck, and uttered Hirajikoma. Her world exploded into agony. You have the man Gekyo? Sasuke gasped cartwheeling to his feet, and you have the man Gekyo? Itachi asked, using his cloak as an umbrella to catch all the Amaterasu from Fugaku's eye. I'll explain later. The elder snarled. Black flames burst forth from his eyes again, and again, but Itachi was ready by then. Big weakness of Amaterasu high damage, high speed, but line of sight only, and low penetration quickly thrown up mud walls and substituted tree limbs were enough to catch the fire without Itachi getting so much as a spark on him. At least, they were enough to stop Amaterasu alone. Kagatsuchi and the black fire was chasing Itachi, forcing him to dart around the area as fast as he could to avoid the tendrils of flame catching up to him. At some point their father and eldest son made eye contact, and Sasuke was about ready to forcibly jolt Fugaku out of Tsukiyomi, if he even could, but it was Itachi who convulsed in midair, crashing against a tree he'd been aiming to land on and barely recovering in time to dodge the rest of the Amaterasu. He looked up at his father and tilted his head. Your other power just causes pain on eye contact? Bit boring, just sort of mine but worse. Is that where the wicked eye thing comes from? How are you still conscious? Fugaku deadpanned. This illness has had me in agony for months. Itachi shrugged. You're not that impressive. Also, because I'm Itachi Uchiha. Fuck you, I can do whatever I want. Standing still to chat had cost him, however, a wide sphere of Amaterasu swirled into being around him. Fugaku shouted a warning but was too late, Sasuke, who had formed the prison in the first place, had already charged ahead and entered before it had closed, drawing his sword and crashing into melee with his brother. His eyes smarted, and he noticed that the visual quality he was used to had dipped considerably since the battle had begun, internally berating himself for his abuse of his abilities. His only consolation was that Itachi must have it way worse. Swords clashed, Rado's two halves slamming into each other as the two brothers dueled in a ring of fire. Sasuke wondered two seconds in why Itachi hadn't already found a way out of the sphere, then realized that Itachi still wanted to be in here. Fugaku was out of the equation, and now Sasuke was stuck in Kenjutsu against an opponent with almost a decade more experience who'd taught him everything he knew now. Thinking like that's what got me in this mess in the first place. I know I'm stronger than him. Sasuke bared his teeth and pushed. His muscles burned, breathing came in sharp pants, and Itachi fell back. Looking almost as shocked as Sasuke felt, Itachi was gradually pushed backwards, Sasuke's furious assault making him lose ground step by step, until his back leg was almost touching the fire behind him. Something had to give, and after another second or so, Itachi did. 
His blade arm stayed out a millisecond too long, and Sasuke took his weapon in an ice pick grip and jabbed, stabbing it right through Itachi's palm. His brother didn't react, and Sasuke didn't plan to leave him time to, twisting the blade until Itachi's rado half dropped from his fingers. Sasuke went into a low sweep, forcing Itachi to jump, and snatched up the falling blade. In one movement, he brought the two together, banished both in a puff of smoke into his bracer, that's all of them except Samahada now, and jumped as well, bringing his other hand round charged with a Chidori aimed at Itachi's heart. He still had one good hand, and Sasuke knew he could form hand seals with it, but any technique he could use at this range would either kill both of them or at least knock both away, sending Itachi right back through the wall of Amaterasu. And there was nothing in the sphere to substitute with. Check, big brother. Move that queen or lose your king. Itachi's eyes fluttered, closed for a split second. Then they opened, and there was a flash of orange. Hinata stumbled to her feet, glared vaguely in Niji's direction, and placed her hand against the back of her neck. No damage. And no curse mark either. Thunder boomed in the sky and rain began to fall as Niji shook out his broken, blistered arm. I worked with Orochimaru, remember? I know how his toys work. And now you're basically out of chakra, and can't draw in any from the outside. Hinata smiled. You're just the same. And I don't need any more chakra. She reached a hand up. Niji, being a ninja, immediately saw the threat there and began running straight for her, but her eyes flashed and she declared Kesho to Ketsu. Crystals manifested all over Niji's body. Hinata's chakra was low and this last act depleted it entirely, but she was able to conjure enough of the opal to thoroughly trap her cousin, leaving him unable to move with only his head visible for an essential half a second. Hinata practically couldn't miss. You know, Karen had so many names she wanted me to call this thing. She mused, out loud, as a charge differential built up between her and the clouds above. Eventually, the lion and all parallels were too good to pass up, but she did have one thing she made me swear to end this with. Niji heaped against his restraints, but didn't have the freedom to move his hands or the strength to flex his way out. Above him, the storm went quiet. This is the griffin. Hinata declared. Be gone, thought. She brought her hand down, and blitzing straight onto Niji from above was a gigantic lightning bolt in the shape of a toothy, clawed, hungry beast. There was a flash that could be seen for miles, and a thunderclap that could be heard in three of the five nations. A thunderclap echoed and move. Get to the shelters. Haku sprinted through the streets, pulling civilians who had fallen up to their feet and shouting as loud as he could. There was a crash, and ahead of him, the entire upper floor of a building tore free of its lower half, clearly struck by something, and began to fall towards the street below. Grimacing, Haku wove hand seals as quickly as he could and shoved, and pillars of ice grew up from the ground, forming a wide roof over the street. The falling masonry crumpled atop the structure, and it held, and the civilians below, most experienced enough in ninja shenanigans, quickly scrambled out from underneath it. Haku let the ice collapse with a sigh, and jumped up above the wreckage, trying to get a good look at what had caused the devastation. His heart skipped a beat. That is a big doggo. The three-headed hound roared, tearing a path of wanton destruction through the village as it ran. Even as Haku had been controlling his meager share of the damage, the beast must have crushed dozens of other innocent people. Ninja were jumping about it like flies, and none of their efforts were doing much more than singeing its fur. Hey pretty boy! Haku looked up at the shout to see Sakura land beside him. What the hell is this thing? What's going on? I don't know! He shot back, looking at it. Where's Naruto? He's coming. Tsunade says she sent off a toad. Well, we'll have to hold out till he's here. Haku eyeballed the distance between them and the dog and began marshalling his chakra. Someone summoned this thing, and they might be able to do it again. I'll go look for the summoner, but you're the only one with the attack potency to take Fluffykins out. How am I gonna Haku finish the jutsu and heaved again? Ice began to appear, small platforms floating in the air in about 30 meter intervals, leading up to the dog's heads. Go! Sakura didn't need telling twice. 
While Haku darted away, she threw herself onto the first ice platform and jumped again, building up momentum and propelling herself up to the beast's mouths. Three heads? Bullshit, she grumbled. Then pushed Chakra down to her knuckles. You've been a very naughty boy. She shouted at it, or rather, them, now piss off. The lot of you. Crack, one fist broke something in the neck of one head, and crack, she threw herself between the jaws of another and stomped, breaking something, and crack, as she jumped across, landed on the skull of the final head and brought both fists down, punching bones straight down into its brain. Whether the summon actually had internal organs or not, her efforts seemed to bear fruit. With three last howls, and a massive burst of smoke, the dog vanished. Sakura experienced brief nausea as the surface she'd been standing on vanished, and used her tree-walking skills to come to a relatively sane stop on the ground. Which was where she saw two people with orange hair, and black cloaks with red clouds. Well, now I have to re-summon that. One of them sighed. Good job. But since you seem to be the only one capable of destroying it that fast, I should be all right. Sakura TCHED and began running towards them, but one put his hands together and banged for something bad at Sakura aside, sending her crashing into a storefront, and then one of the redheads had grabbed her by the throat and looking up she could see the dog was back, how the hell did their summon it so quickly then, something happened. She screamed as her attacker yanked, and there was a brief moment of agony as she felt like she was being torn right out of her own body, and Sakura Haruno died. Lightning crashed against the Yada mirror, dispersed along the spirit weapon's surface, and then Sasuke was slammed backwards by the shield's surface and had to rapidly dispel his own Amaterasu to avoid taking a dunk in it himself. In front of Sasuke, Itachi's armored orange Sisanu burst into existence around him as he staggered back to his feet, eyes bleeding, arms shaking and stance nothing resembling anything effective. Move out of range! Sasuke shouted. He can't hold it for more than a few sec there was a black flash, and a circle of Amaterasu appeared around the trio, and this time it wasn't Sasuke's doing. He's completely given up on having any vision after this. The youngest realized. This is him going all out. Oh fuck. Itachi in his gigantic fuck-off suit of armor moved towards them and oh shit it was fast, the Tatsuka blade swinging almost as fast as Itachi had swung Rado except 3 feet wide and 20 feet long Fugaku jumped one direction, then found his way blocked by the Yada mirror slamming into the ground to his left, and the Susanoo was in front and the Amaterasu was behind him and the blade was coming in from the right there was a flash of red. Fugaku Susanoo, oh of course he has a Susanoo, was about as big as Itachi's, and human rather than skeleton, but it was unarmored and the Tatsuka blade slammed into its side with a crunch of chakra and bone and a dent was formed. Fugaku's avatar swung a fist that slammed into Itachi's face, and in its other hand formed a giant Fuma shuriken that it swung forwards. The mirror caught it with a thud, then Itachi brought his sword up and back down again, smashing through the red Susanoo's skull, then he did it again, and there was a flash of purple, and Sasuke's still skeletal Susanoo's shoulder checked Itachi's, he'd had to do something. Itachi fell back a few meters, and the three took a brief moment to appreciate how fucking epic this confrontation was. Then the three Sisanu in the arena of black fire started fighting again. Sasuke's, smallest but lightest, and it had arms now, pushed in to punch the flat of the Tatsuka blade away, and then Itachi brought the mirror up to block the next punch, then another strike from Fugaku's shuriken, then the shuriken span and shoved the shield up and Sasuke slammed a hammer fist into an orange midriff, cracking it, then the Tatsuka blade came back round and beheaded Sasuke's Susanoo outright. It continued its swing and stabbed through the hole in the center of the shuriken, hooking it round and burying it through the chest of Fugaku's. Sasuke's, still headless, punched another two cracks into Itachi's before the Yada mirror fell down to slam into the purple avatar so hard it almost fell over, leaving a giant crack in the skeleton. Itachi tore his shield out while Sasuke was still recovering, Kami why does it have to feel like I've actually been beheaded uau uau, and continued a full barrage against Fugaku, smacking the shuriken out of his Susanoo's hands, blocking an ineffectual fireball from the man within using the mirror then squaring up and pulling the Tatsuka blade back for a stab that was going to puncture straight through the red energy and into the man inside. Sasuke, acting almost entirely on instinct at this point, stretched out with one hand, and a long whip made up of fiery purple tomo stretched out from his Susanoo's hands. Oh, hey, Megatama beads. Unorthodox, but I can work with it. The beads wrapped around the Tatsuka blade and Sasuke yanked, 
pulling the sword off course and instead making it dig a great furrow in the earth as it swung round in an arc, leaving Itachi's arms wide open. Perfect. Sasuke forced more chakra into his avatar, tinted it with fire, and, shaking with the effort, built up a giant version of the Raisin Kunai with his Susanoo's free hand. He took one last look at his brother, bleeding, shaking, crying outright, looking back at him with an expression he couldn't even understand. Then he slammed the Raisin Kunai forwards. It smashed through the armor, lodged in the flesh of the Susanoo. Then, with a final echoing boom, it tore the entire avatar to shreds. Hinata sighed, as the rubble rained down around her. Inhaled. Exhaled. And then huh, would you look at that? Oh you've got to be fucking kidding me she jumped back as something crashed into the floor where she'd just been stood. The smoke cleared, and ahead of her she saw Niji. Except not quite. His entire body, hair included, was an opal white. A few cracks ran down his skull, and down the arm she'd damaged earlier, but other than that he was fine. And he had what in the he had four arms. Guess I must just be a coward. He mused. Turns out, I don't want to die after all. Hinata swore and reached for her pouch, throwing more of her explosive tagged kunai, but Niji ran through the explosions like they weren't even there, coming straight up to her and kicking her in the pelvis, knocking her back into a pillar. Anyway, this is my Vishnu transformation. He told her. It makes me stronger, faster, and more durable. Boring, right? Oh yeah, also arms. Hinata didn't have any choice but to engage him in melee. Her chakra was completely exhausted, as was everything else about her, but she still rallied a desperate cry and ran back at him in a gentle fist stance. He was faster, faster than he'd been earlier in the fight when he'd already been able to beat her in a taijutsu bar, and he had 50% more limbs now. What was worse was when he let one of her palm strikes through, it had to be on purpose, and it thudded harmlessly into the white exterior. Oh yeah, I also don't have chakra points now. He told her. There was strain in his voice, she noticed, it was coming out raspy like there was no moisture in his throat. So she curled that palm into a fist and tried to punch him, but he caught it with one of his arms. Another caught her other arm, and with his remaining two he fell into a painfully familiar stance. Eight trigrams, 128 palms. Shift the attacks peppered her, and she buckled under the pressure, going numb as no 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 he let her go, and she hit the floor. She couldn't feel anything. It was like lying on a bed in Orochimaru's hideout again, only this time she was chakra exhausted to begin with. Well tried. Niji's voice wafted in from somewhere, distant and hazy. But insufficient. I'm going to die when this wears off if I don't get those eyes, so excuse me if I do this in a bit of a hurry a memory came to Hinata, unbidden, from well over four years ago. In my life, I will fight. Probably many, many times. I will fight for many reasons, for my friends, for my country, for myself, and I'm sure sometimes I will fight without even knowing why. Sometimes I will fight certain of victory, but most of the time in the murky realm of probability and doubt. And sometimes I will be forced to fight an opponent who I believe is beyond me. And when I look down the paths of the consequences of defeat, and see that the world will suffer for it then and only then will I open the gates. This I swear, on my heart and on my name. If Hinata died here, Niji would quite possibly become the most powerful ninja alive. He would pluck her eyes from her sockets and claim the strength to destroy all of Kanoha if he felt like it. And his organization was hunting the bijou. He would kill Naruto. The girl's heart knew what it wanted. Her brain throbbed as a pathway within it burst into activity. Her eyes snapped open and her hand darted out, catching one of Niji's as it reached towards her face. My name is Hinata Hyuga. She declared, meeting his eyes. And the eight gates unblocked Tenketsu, bitch. She punched with her other arm and Niji flew backwards, and she wasted no time sprinting after him with a war cry. Two more strikes slammed into his midriff and a kick buckled his leg, and then his forearms came up and began fighting back, rocketing palm strikes into her. She fell into a boxing stance that would have made her clan disown her, minimizing surface area, shielding her face and hitting him with as much brute force as she could muster. He was ice, she was fire, passion warring against cold apathy. 
she targeted the one arm she'd damaged earlier, and the crack spread considerably, but he was soon able to disable her again, shutting off chakra points in her arms, legs and midriff and kicking her away, but she was not stopping, nothing he tried was going to keep her down anymore. Second gate, open. She declared, and there was a burst of pain as her body systems rebooted themselves again. She crashed back into him, faster this time, barely even bothering to stop his attacks anymore, just going all out offensively until crack one of the four arms was split off at the elbow, and went flying off into the distance. She pushed her advantage and he fell back, unbalanced, skin coming off in chunks, still hammering attacks down on her until again she was forced to stumble to a halt, and again T third gate, open. Agony, all-encompassing agony, but she ignored it, charging straight back and attacking him again, hitting even harder, and at this point she was throwing him around the hideout with every punch. She kneed him in the face, grabbed his throat, and slammed him into the floor, then took him for a ride, digging a new road into the structure with the back of his head and leaving shards of white opal behind gleaming like stars. His expression didn't change, it was quite possible he didn't even feel the pain anymore, his three remaining arms continued to strike at her until the arm she was dragging him with went limp, so she reached down with her teeth to grip his hair and fling him into a pillar. She threw herself into him, trapped him there with her own body, grabbed one of his arms with her own and ripped it came off with a crunch, causing her to stagger backwards and away from him, and he just wouldn't go down, using his last two arms, both on the same side, to pepper strikes all along her spine until she crashed into the ground again. FF fourth gate, Hinata would be crying if her moisture wasn't evaporating right off her skin op and NNGH open. This was her limit, as far as she'd gotten with all the years of independent study under Orochimaru, and it had never hurt like this before. Her heart felt like it was melting by the second, every nerve ending on fire as her body went through something it had never been built to go through, but she relished it. Pain was good. Pain was her friend. Pain meant she was alive, and nothing had ever felt better than being alive in that moment. She stood, turned around and backhanded him across the face, cracking the entirety of his head. His broken face turned to her, and his two remaining hands darted towards her, but this time, she caught them. He tried to kick her, but he couldn't generate enough torque to do anything, and she slammed her forehead into his nose. His face sort of crumpled, revealing that the white seemed to go all the way through and then she reached back and jammed one hand into his head. Bleeding fingers tore through opal, and with a final key eye, Hinata wrenched Niji's left eye out of its socket. And that, finally, seemed to be enough. What was left of Niji staggered backwards, barely able to support itself. Its mouth worked, and broken, jarred words made their way out. Just so you know he said, fixing his last eye on her. I've always loved you, cousin. And and it was true. Hinata gaped as he began to tip backwards, continuing not in, like, a weird way or anything I'm not a fucking Achihan with that, Niji toppled onto his back, and lay still. Hinata, still clutching his eye, sank to her knees. The fourth gate cut out, and she lost consciousness, falling to the floor. Thank you for your views, likes, subscriptions, and overall support of my ongoing efforts to bring great content to all of you. Check out my Patreon for more mature fanfiction. The link is in the description and like everywhere on my channel.